Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ord from the Ord Oracle. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord, O-R-D, dash oracle.com. That's Ord, O-R-D, dash oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's going on? Well, I, I sent you over some charts. I, uh, I have them. go over them here. I have them. All right, all right. Let's, chart, let's, let's do chart number one. Okay. Um, which is uh, the bullish percent index. What uh, bullish percent index for the gold miners index? What yes. this chart does is actually measures the percent of stocks that are point and figure buy signals. So. Oh, interesting. Um, that, that a point and figure buy signals, right? Yeah, it's a point and figure buy signal. Tom Dorsey. Okay. And, okay, cool. Uh, so, anyhow, um, what I did was I made a ratio out of it. Okay. So I put the bullish percent index slash GDX ratio. Yeah. And I and I tried just using the bullish percent index RSI on it. And it didn't really come out well. So what this thing does is actually when this bullish percent, the buy signals and the gold miners index really go through the floor and GDX kind of stays is pretty close to the same price, that's when the RSI drops down. Okay. So you want me to repeat that? Yes. So, so, so anyhow, when the when there's less when the bullish when there's a, a bunch of sell signals going on, okay, and GDX really doesn't move down much. Nice. That's when the RSI goes down. I get it. So, so, so you know, it's kind of a, a usual indicator. But it works well. It, it, this chart goes back to 2008. Looks like. Well, you know what's so and cool, the, Tim, is that I ahead. I think you probably have when we were doing workshops that you were probably there when we had uh, Tom Dorsey there too, and he was doing him. He's all over point and figure. What happens with point and figure, folks? It's a great system, but it's always slow. So this is pretty cool that you did that ratio, man. So I get it. Yeah, I get, yeah, right. Yeah, the yeah the ratio the ratio speeds everything up and gives you closer to where you need to be. Right. And uh, yeah, I was there with Tom Dorsey. You're yeah. Right. Uh, well, anyhow, um, anyhow, the, all the blue lines there are the times when the RSI of this ratio got below minus twenty five. Or as I put this chart on this morning, it was about fifteen and. 15.59 be exact. Okay. And so and so it kind of measures the plunges. And so plunges are really good for the market. You don't want the market gradually go down. Oh, yeah. You want the market just scream down. Right. Scream down is when all the opportunities arise. Right. So I do a lot of stuff with panic and oh, yeah. and uh, uh, surges and down surges and all this other stuff. And that's where all the opportunities seem to rise. So Right now, uh, as we're putting this update on, or you know, I wrote this, put this chart, sent it to you. It's fifteen point five nine. Anything below twenty five is a buy is a buy signal. Okay. But really, the mo you need the momentum to turn up, and right. it really hasn't turned up yet. We're just saying we're probably hitting the floor. Right. And um, well, so listen when it gets to this. Above, this uh, is minus twenty five. It's probably even though it's after the low. That's probably when the the rally really starts. Uh, so, and also, I want to talk on GDX here. I have a red line drawn across the GDX chart, which is right below that. Yes, ratio. I see that. And if you notice that, we're right smack on a on a uh, trend line there, uh, kind of the highs and lows. We did fall below last year in the August decline, but we're at a support area too, and we got an oversold condition here on the RSI. So we got a, quite a bit of evidence that we're probably at some sort of a significant low. And what you also have here, you know, let me pull this chart over here just so you can see it, folks, and Tim can see it, too. The, you're coming into the strength that we had coming off the bottom. We had 39 million shares, and there's only 9.8 million, 9 million. That's it. You know, yeah. it already rejected that low. It rejected 28.16, and the low is 28.20, and now you're trading at 28.32. Kind of wild. Yeah. 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 So, and actually, the... Uh, not change up, but this is a weekly chart. Nice. So nice. Um, yep. So there's something developing right now as we're talking. We've been saying this for the last couple of weeks, and nothing's really happened. But something is really developing on on a bigger time frame. These signals that when they do trigger, if you go back and look at time, you know those signals are are a year, um, sometimes even longer. So. Um, uh, we're looking at you know a, a rally that may last into next July, August, September. Yes. So, 
Uh, so anyhow, let's flip to the next chart. Okay. That's, so I'm, and, anyhow, the, the bottom window is the uh, now. This is a daily chart, so it's, it's okay. A, it's the shorter term chart, and we've been talking about this chart here. I think going back to July, and 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 what I pointed out on the bottom chart is the uh, GDX up down volume percent with the yep. fifty day average, and so. Every time it's got down below minus 20, I always said that, you know, the decline is over. Well, the decline's over. What happens, though, the market flips sideways. Right. And that, and that sideways pattern can last, uh, that one in the last six months, and the other one had four months. We're two months into it right now. You're right. Everyone went crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and now we need a close above zero. We did have it last week. Now we kind of fell below it. We're minus uh, about three and a half as okay. we're putting this update on. But it really needs to get above 50, and or zero rather, and stay above zero. Yes. And that's when the, the majority of the rally begins. And that's all that blue area on the chart. Every time I see it's it. been above uh, zero, that's when the meat of the rally starts. And so we're kind of above it, we're kind of below it, but you know, we may go sideways, could go sideways for another couple of weeks, don't know. But going back to the first chart, we're at a bottom. Right. So, right. Uh, you know, the decline's over, can we, you know, wind around here for, you know, days or even a couple of weeks, you know, maybe, maybe not, I don't and, know, you know, but anyhow, the decline's over, we're going sideways, this gave us signal back in July, we're already gone sideways for two months now. And so, you know, maybe we we start this month, maybe we start next month, don't know. But we are going to start, at some point, a rally. And, so you know, this is how the, these gold the stocks trade. It, it oh, seems, oh, I yeah. see your time is about running out. I'll hold on. Yeah, and, you know, it seems, Tim, this is how these gold stocks always trade, man. I mean, do you know what I mean? They, yeah. they drive you up the wall, and then when they come off the lows, man, holy cow. I mean, they come off like a yeah. rocket ship, so it's really interesting. Stay right there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials up 52, Nasdaq's down 127, S&Ps are off 17. Tim and I are coming right back. And don't forget, you can get hold of Tim every trading day. Ord, O-R-D, dash Oracle.com. Tim and I come right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Ward, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 64. NASDAQ is down 115. S&Ps are down 14 and a half. Okay, Tim, uh, we're ready. All right, let's go to chart number three. Okay. Okay, chart one was a weekly chart. Yep. That, that was showing that the market is exhausted to the downside. Chart two is a daily chart, and it's hovering around zero. It needs to be above zero, really say the short-term trend is turned up, is, is at zero. And this is a monthly chart. So this looks at the, the big picture, and it goes back to 2010. And what the chart is, the bottom window is the, the uh, cumulative of up-down volume uh, percent. Okay. Now, the major is the up-down volume in uh, GDX. The next window higher is the monthly advanced decline percent for GDX. So it's basically really shows what the market's really doing internally. Yes. And what I, what I found out that the bottom window, which is the up-down volume, actually has more of a meaning to what GDX does than actually the advanced decline. And I don't know why that is, but all the signals are more reliable off the up-down volume percent. Okay. And I, 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 uh, I had another chart, but it got late in the day. I didn't email it over to you, but I put a, a Bollinger or a percent Bollinger band on that bottom chart. Yes. And what that tells you, the percent Bollinger band tells you when you're hitting the upper Bollinger band or the lower Bollinger band. Right. And went back, went back in time and we're actually hitting the lower Bollinger band. We did that back in 2019 and also 2016. So it's kind of a rare event. And we hit it twice here over the last couple of months. I think it hit in July, and we're hitting it right now again, where this up-down volume on the monthly time frame is actually below the lower Bollinger Band. And previous times had done that, it was at a significant low, as you can just look at 2016 sure. and also 2019. You know, and the market had a, you know basically a multi-year rally uh, going from that point on. So I'm assuming we're doing the same thing here. But the market, to really say the market is an uptrend, is when the uh, the uh, up-down volume percent 
closes above the mid Bollinger band. Now, sometimes you get a little late. If you look at 2019, the rally's already going on for about you know six months or better. So it's kind of a late thing, but that does confirm that you're finally in an uptrend. And this thing doesn't really wiggle a lot. They get false signals. Well, that would make sense uh, because you're you're in a monthly, right? So, I mean, so yeah, the cool thing is you can you can so use your words, you, we, you can use your so, dailies so, and weeklies in order to figure out where you're at, and then once the monthly turns, it's like heaven on earth. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. You just basically you should be long, you know. And this is if you look at the bottom window there, that up down volume, it gave a sell signal back in 2021, and it didn't really budge up or down pretty much just kept declining even though if you look at gdx it had some significant rallies in there but overall it was a, a pretty much of a downtrend that's why i kept saying that you know a lot of these gold stocks just got the crap beat out of them right and they remain beat out of them and that's a good thing on a longer term basis uh but on a if you're trying to trade or if, if you're in other words if chances are if you, if you bought after 2021 when this thing turned down you had to trade that particular gold stock but most likely it went up and it came right back down right so right. i'm looking at the time now we're probably entering that it actually you can hold long that gold stock once you get above the mid bollinger band so it won't be a trading range it'll be an impulse wave yes similar to 2019 and 2016 you hold on and most and this stock most likely over you know this once these signals are generated if you look at the signals there they're they're two three years you know lo long you know last sell signal was going to 2021 in general that's still on a sell signal but i got some other in, you know like i showed you and some other indicators that well the decline's done and we should be turning up so once this thing turns up it becomes a, a trending market so right. you we don't have BGO anymore, like AEM. You know, it's been a garbage up and down market over the years. Yes. You know, since 2021. Well, chances are this thing turns up. We're going to start making higher highs, higher lows. and won't be a trading market anymore. And that's my whole point of this chart. Right. So uh, this, uh, I'm saying this is um, next time we do next Tuesday, I'll show that Bollinger Band on this chart and show you where it is. Nice. But we're probably setting that at a significant low here on that. Uh, yep, I know. I can uh, see that. I mean, I love how they're coming in, testing those strengths with dramatically lighter volume. We know how, I mean, it, you know, it drives everyone up a wall. I know how that works, too. But, you know, the bottom line is that you're coming into strength. Even when I was just looking at AEM, you know, that's, it's today... You know, it rejected forty-six dollars seventy-nine cents, and the volume is one point five million, and it's coming into seventy-five million. <laughs> it's like really. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's yeah, about I as know, intense as you can get. You know what I mean? It's like okay. Yeah. Right. Well, what I'm thinking, you know, you know, we we were at, you know back in the two thousand. Remember that turn up back then? Oh yeah. I'm. I'm, I'm thinking something similar is happening here because this market really hadn't done anything. Right. I mean, it went down from 2012, 2016. Well, 2016, the market was basically a trading market, and we're still in a trading market because this, these, these two indicators pretty much went, you know, they went up and down, but they pretty much went sideways. So I'm thinking we're building a huge base, and I think, you know, time will tell, but I think this is similar to 2000. Yeah, you know, where nobody kind of believed the gold market because everything's kind of set up for it. But at least we're going to get at least a year or two or longer, probably this a two year rally. If this thing gets above the mid Bollinger Band, you know we can count on at least a two year rally. Uh, and so the thing that's amazing, every, folks, is that when Tim says no one believed on it, including all the gold CEOs, because I was doing all those gold shows. And these gold CEOs yeah. are looking like me. I had five heads, man. I'm telling them, no, 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 no. Everything's going to go up. And they're looking at me. Hey, man, Tom, I hope you're right, but I think you're out of your freaking mind. That's exactly what they're saying to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but the time is, it was kind of a unique time and, you know, period. But, you know, it, it all, it's all numbers. If, uh, you know, yeah. if things do go up and, and they peak out, we'll point that out. Right. And we'll have indicators that say, you know, we're, we're pretty extended here. So, uh, which will time, happen because that time is not now. I'll no, put it that way. no, but that you know, we know that the gold market loves to extend itself. There's no doubt. Yeah, yeah. So we, we can. Uh, we got. I got two more charts. We got. You got time. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to bring you on the next section, too. We can do, uh, I'll go to the next one, then we'll take a break, and we'll do the next one, all right? There we go. All right. Okay. Okay, this this is, uh, we'll point out this chart here. I'm doing a lot of stuff with the VIX, because VIX shows fear. Yes. And, and, it, and fear is, it doesn't work, you know, optimism, it kind of works on tops, but momentum works a lot better on tops. When things get out of hand, they, they call it... Uh, Oh, parabolic. Yes. You know, you see a parabolic move, you, you, you got to get out. But anyhow, bottoms are a little easier to pick out because everybody, it's, it's kind of like a atom bomb going up. Everything right. explodes up. Right. So I do a lot of stuff with the VIX. And, uh, uh, yeah, I think we're going to hit Yep. And wait right there, folks. There Tim and I are going to be coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials right now trading up 67. NASDAQ's down 123. S&Ps are off 16. Don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day. He has a great newsletter at ord-oracle.com. That's ord-oracle.com. Tim and I come right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Dow. Dow's up 70. Nasdaq's down 121. S&Ps are off 15 and a half. We're talking about what I'm in, Mr. Tim Ord. And right now, we're talking about the S&P. Okay, Tim. All right. Um, anyway, the, the bottom window is the VIX, which when I sent it over to is uh, 1509. Anything below 17, a lot of times you got a trending market. Yeah, you can have pullbacks, but usually not big ones. Not, not, otherwise, this thing would be going through the ceiling. So whatever's going on right now is probably not uh, a big decline, at least not yet. That may change. But if you look at the next window up, it's yes. the SPX VIX ratio. And I've done this on a weekly time frame and a daily time frame. Daily time frame, which is what this one is here, is a little bit more messier, but it, it if you know how to read it, you can still see the signals. And basically, how do you get a signal? When the S&P is making higher highs, if this ratio is making lower highs, it's usually going into a top. Okay. And all those, the pink area or the, with the red lines pointing out where the S&P has made higher highs and the uh, SPX VIX ratio made lower highs, those are all worthwhile highs going back. Well, here, if you notice on the right window there, uh, yeah, obviously, the s and has not made a new high here. We're still quite a ways below the previous highs of uh, what, July. But if you look at the ratio, we made a higher high, barely, but we still made a higher high. Yes. To me, that's a bullish divergence. No, I can see that. That's, that's, the, that's the second one down, right? Yeah, second, yeah, yeah, right. Well, no, uh, I can see it. Okay, cool. Right, right. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah se second one up from the bottom. The bottom one right. is the VIX. Second, yeah, I have it. Okay, ratio. cool. Right. So, okay, that ain't supposed to happen. Right. So, if it does happen, something uh, weird's going on, and the VIX is kind of confirming it. So, I don't think any worthwhile top is forming here. Uh, I had a projection, a pullback around a 444 on the SPYs, and... We hit it yesterday, and we're kind of into it today a little bit. You know, we, we, we made a lower low. I got to see what volume's going to come in. But um, anyhow, this is a bullish divergence, so I'm not bearish here at all. I'm thinking we're going to go back up and actually break the previous high of July. And that's about the most deviant thing the market could do, right? Break a high in September. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. And so, and so and, you know, that high, it will be important because say we do go up and break the high. Say, that's, say this indicator, it does work, and it, and it implies we're going to go back up and test the high because the SPX or the SPX fixed ratio leads the SPX. Yes. Well, if it leads, this says we're going to go back up to the old high. And the SPX is still below its old high. So we're going to go back up the old high now. If it does, and this ratio makes a lower high, that's where the top comes in. Yep. You get what I'm saying? I'm with you. Well, you know it's so intriguing? Like when you look at this, folks, okay? So, you know, the, the trend that we had coming up, you know, this is the SPY I'm looking at now, right? The bottom line is that you didn't, you didn't even do a 0 0.382 retracement. You did just over a, a 0 0.23 retracement. You know, I just put it up here. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, you know, if you deal with Fibonacci sequence, that's about as strong as you can get. So, it, you know, I know this sounds bizarre, but bottom line is that that's how, if you're a Fibonacci believer, that's how this sets up, man. So. Yeah. And so, you know, this SPX VIX ratio kind of says the same thing. So yes. It's, it's, it's for some reason, we're, we're getting strength here. Why? I don't know. don't care. But, you know, you got to believe the indicators. Well, maybe this time it won't work. Maybe, yeah. you know, but the odds are against that. So right. uh, let's, let's flip over. Okay. I have the last chart, chart. The last chart. Yep. And uh, this is the uh, 
uh, SPY because volume seems to work better on the SPY than on the SPX. So anyhow, so I use the volume on the SPY and this SPY chart. And the blue area is where the I recorded the ticks and trend. Every time the ticks and trend got in panic levels, yes, that's why all those numbers are on there. I got 1.79 you know, trend and 440 down tick readings or 414. So I recorded all those down tick readings and the trend readings, and it turns out, in that blue area. And so when you go down into that blue area, once you start seeing panics in the ticks and trend, it will continue to show panic in the ticks and trend once you get into that area. And we're entering it right right now as yeah. as we're putting this update on. And the trend, it needs to be, what I learned over the years, the trend read needs to be at least 1.2 okay. to show panic. And we got, as we're doing this, like we got a trend of 1.2. Oh, interesting. And uh, we had... I had ticks yesterday of minus, uh, or a trend yesterday of 1.14. That's not really a lot of panic. But anyhow, if we go forward here for the next couple of days tomorrow, I bet the trend will start reaching 1.2 or higher over the next couple of days. I think that's going to say that's support, and we're going to end up with the buy signal, and we're going to go back to the old highs. The reason why the old highs, you go back to chart four. Okay. Because... The SPX VIX ratio says we're going to go back to the old yep. highs. Wow, what a great yep. breakdown, man! Unreal, yeah. So now you know, it'll be you know the market can prove me wrong, but that's how I'm coming up with the theory that we may go back to 460, which is basically the July highs. And what happens there, I don't know. Right. Um, you know, to me, I think it's probably could be a, some sort of a high. And it could be a worthwhile high. I'll have to wait and see. Don't know. Yeah. Well, you know, it's but, so interesting, uh, too, Tim. I, I watch the dollar a lot, okay? And if we put the dollar up here, watch this. You know, the, the S&P and the dollar go like tick for tick. If, that's, if the dollar goes higher, you know, bottom line, S&P goes lower. And when you take a look at this, um, the, S, the, the dollar, so where we're at is that this number here, the, the number, it, it took out a swing, and it's having a hard time staying over, which is 104.699. We're at 105.009. And, you know, it's just like, oh, you, you just, and, and we, had, we had already come down. What happened is that we already come down with conviction, you know, about a week and a half ago. And then what does it do? <laughs> the bottom line, it goes right back and breaks the trend line and goes above it again, but just barely. So, you know, when we look at everything that you have, and I look at this, it's like, you know what, between the S&P and the gold market, you know, if we get that break, that's what's going to, because every time you, you take a look at the, the gold contract, of course, you know, all those highs that we were talking about, that's when the dollar has also failed. I mean, I remember when I started the gold report at $282, the, do the dollar was $121, $121.50. And then it went all the way down to wow. 89 that's that was the number at 2000 to 2011. That was the, the longer run. Was that wild? So, you yeah, know, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, but pretty cool. But, man. You know, but, yeah. But we should start seeing panic as we're, you know, right around this four, four range, because this is kind of where sport is. So, uh, well, yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Week, it's week, expiration week. No, and I know. It's amazing out here. Time. Yeah, 67% of September's were up. So the odds are saying we'll have some sort of a rally. So this may be setting up. Of all the days to trade, too, I think Fridays are the best day to trade. I think they, they make you sweat over the weekend. I love it. Or some, whatever the market gods want to do, yeah. they make you sweat over the weekend. Well, but, you know, it's wild so it is that, you tomorrow. know. I'll we'll have to wait and see. No, I'm with you. Because on the open today, you know, we had that trend run to 137, man. <laughs> it's yeah. like, okay, you know. Sure. Well, listen, Tim, it's always a pleasure, man. You have a great weekend, a safe weekend. We look forward to speaking to you on Tuesday. All right, thank, thank you. you.